My name is Dungu Ahmed, uh, MMED1, and I'm here to present the pathophysiology of cachexia, uh, which may help uh, explain some of the underlying conditions in the, uh, in the two cases that we've just had. So, uh, mainly, sorry, cachexia is a complex uh, metabolic syndrome largely associated with, uh, associated with an underlying illness uh, which is characterized by loss of skeletal muscle with or without uh, loss of fat mass. Uh, it's largely irreversible. And there are two uh, types that we know, uh, primary and secondary cachexia. So some of the underlying conditions that are associated with cachexia uh, cancers, chronic infections, uh, HIV AIDS, heart failure, as we've just seen, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, COPD. Uh, so this means that palliative consults really are not restricted to oncology, but like cutting across anyone who uh, has like a life uh, limiting illness. So some of the, what are the underlying uh, events happening in a patient with cachexia? Uh, so usually these patients have a diminished nutrient intake, like we've seen in our previous patients, but they also have an ongoing uh, tissue depletion, which eventually uh, leads to weight loss, uh, increasing debility, uh, fluctuations in the resting energy expenditure, as we'll come to see. Uh, largely, uh, they have loss of appetite, which may be due to underlying conditions mainly. And they also may not be able to eat for mechanical reasons like obstructing tumors, which are preventing their intake. So uh, secondary cachexia, in this situation you wouldn't have had cachexia, but somehow as a result of this you end up getting cachexia. And one can be uh, prolonged starvation where you have like a low food intake uh, your energy expenditure is uh, reduced, uh, you utilize ketones, then eventually you utilize the muscle tissue itself. Then you can have uh, deconditioning, like many of our patients who are admitted for very long times, uh, the muscles uh, can begin wasting away. Then you may have uh, infections initiating the process of cachexia. So in primary uh, cachexia, uh, which is really one of uh, what we are really talking about mainly. Uh, you have a general state uh, which is characterized by high uh, resting energy expenditure or what you'd call a high basal metabolic rate. And this is a hyper -catabolic, catabolic state which is going on where the body uh, is really eating itself up, uh, breaking down uh, mainly protein to try and provide energy for what's going on in the body. Then it's also associated with uh, uh, levels of hypometabolism. You don't have the normal metabolic processes going on. You have a relative uh, glucose intolerance. Uh, okay, here you have like a delayed kind of uh, insulin production. And so you have some saturating levels of sugars around. And you also have uh, uh, some insulin resistance by some of the underlying uh, factors going on like TNF-alpha. So you also, uh, for the lipids, you have uh, increased lipolysis, as we'll come to see later. And protein synthesis uh, is reduced generally, although there are areas where it's increased, but for the muscles specifically, it's decreased. Okay, you have also uh, other underlying factors like the neuro and humoral like now the gut uh, brain axis dysfunction, like a lot of our patients have, uh, you know, like there is some benefit in even food going down uh, your throat, but if you're not able to take, all these can com compound misery and somehow enhance like uh, your reduced appetite to take in food. And the psychosocial uh, factors, like in our first case where someone is really there at, uh, you know you're like seeing end of life and you've lost interest in many of the things around you. Okay. 
So uh, largely, we can look at uh, mainly the postal phy physiology in like uh, two main uh, units, like uh, hu uh, host tumor interaction of like mainly these tumors which are causing uh, the cachexia and the metabolic uh, dysregulation that's happening in these patients. And largely, the metabolic dysregulation is characterized by uh, uh, protein metabolism, like you have mainly proteolysis, then you have the lipid metabolism, mainly lipolysis, as we have seen, and eventually you also have an increased resting energy expenditure as a result of like, uh, the cytokines that are initiating these processes. Then for the tumor side, uh, you have uh, tumor factors, uh, which may be released, uh, the pro uh tumor factors, as we'll come to see, like the TNF alpha interleukins and the like. Then you have the host tumor interaction mainly. So the tumor factors, uh, as I have mentioned, uh, you have uh, uh, proteolysis inducing factor, then you have the lipid mobilizing uh, factor. So all these eventually lead to breakdown uh, of protein mainly, and the LMF for fat. So uh, as a bit of evidence, uh, uh, the proteolysis uh, inducing factor has been identified in urine of patients with colon, uh, pancreatic, lung, ovarian, and breast cancers, mainly as per that article. So this factor has been largely, has been identified as one of the main factors at play in pa uh, patients who have cachexia. Okay, yes, yeah, so you have a host uh, response. Okay, uh, if, like in response to the presence of like tumor cells around, the body can uh, begin producing uh, inflammatory uh, cells, uh, factors like TNF alpha, and which kind of uh, eventually lead to alterations in metabolism, like TNF-alpha can cause insulin resistance as per that article. Yeah, still in a uh, continuation with the host tumor interaction, you have like, uh, as I said, the uh, microenvironment around these tumor cells that, uh, begins, uh, leads to a body response, which is characterized by mainly production of these cytokines, the three, uh, TNF alpha interleukin uh, 1 and 6, which end up uh, increasing the resting energy expenditure, and eventually you induce anorexia, cachexia. Yes, yeah, so uh, as you can see, uh, mainly we have uh, protein breakdown that's going on, and that's more evidence for the proteolysis inducing factor, which we've mentioned already. Uh, then you have uh, some people who looked at, uh, okay, the lipolysis, uh, lipid metabolizing factor, and some factor called zinc alpha 2 glycoprotein. I may not mind about that right now, but the main issue is the, these factors, this factor tries to sensitize ad, adipose tissue to lipolytic stimuli by increasing uh, ad, cyclic AMP production in the adipocytes. However, there was a mention uh, in, in response to this, uh, some uh, people tried to give patients uh, a psychopentonic acid, which does appear to inhibit the LMF effects, but in this uh, article they were saying still they did not witness like a successful reversal of the symptoms, but a lot of work is still going on in this area. Yeah, so as, uh, here you have still increased resting energy expenditure due to uh, dysregulation of energy metabolism. Uh, as one thing that uh, when you're faced with patients who are cachexic, you also, uh, to an ordinary eye, especially the attendants, the patient looks like they're just starving patients who are wasting away because of inability to really eat. So there will, a lot of times they will want the patient to take in as much or feed whether by tube or whatever mechanism. But the factors that are really at play in cachexia are quite different from those of starvation. 
and here you can see that the resting energy expenditure is usually uh, increased in cachexia, but in starvation, it's the other way around as the body is trying to conserve protein. Yeah, so this is one of the areas that, uh, because cachexia is really a largely an evolving field at the moment, there's too much research going on to try and pinpoint what are the exact causes. And this is one factor that they are looking at, which can combine all the others in one, because they all seem to uh, kind of activate the ATP yeah, ubiquity independent proteolytic pathway. So uh, for further reading, someone can want to look at that and see how to explore. So uh, in summary, really we'll look at this slide trying to tell us what's happening in uh, starvation, cachexia, uh, maybe sarcopenia, which is like uh, loss of uh, skeletal muscle. Uh, but in starvation, you can see that the BMI, uh, oh, the BMI is the basal uh, metabolic index, body mass index, sorry. Yeah, so the BMI is going down in starvation, it's going down in cachexia. So to the ordinary eye, it's really, really appearing the same to the attendant or any other person. But you can see that the inflammatory markers, like the cytokine acute phase reactants, like C reactive protein, they're quite flat, like they're not really increasing in starvation. But for cachexia, you can see that they are really in full swing, they are going upwards. And as mentioned earlier, the resting energy expenditure is decreasing in starvation, but increasing largely. So you have a lot of body really metabolism going on, even when it's not for the greater good. Then protein synthesis uh, suppressed in starvation. Uh, it's uh, up and like it's down in cachexia for like the skeletal muscles and what, which may have maybe other proteins, maybe some antibodies or what, which may be uh, continue to be produced. Then uh, muscle and fat uh, for uh, starvation, because in starvation you're really depending on, uh, on the fat, so it, it's going on, it's like being eaten away. Uh, same for uh, uh, cachexia, however, you can still have cachexia without bothering the fat so much, but eventually you do. Then uh, insulin, it's down in, uh, in cachexia, in, in starvation, and in, in uh, cachexia, you have like, like insulin, uh, even when it's, be, okay, I know there's a bit of delayed release of insulin, but you have mainly insulin resistance uh, that's going on. So maybe eventually you don't really, never mind the amount of insulin, but the factors that are causing uh, like a resistance to its function are mainly at play. Then uh, cortisol is quite uh, increased in cachexia because of uh, it's a catab highly catabolic, as we know, cortisol. So you eventually have like breakdown going on. As I mentioned earlier, that cachexia is largely a hypercatabolic state. Then basically, yeah, you have increase of caloric, uh, caloric intake of the muscles. In cachexia, the muscles are not really taking in uh, a lot of these nutrients. It's the other way around. They are being broken down. Thank you very much. Yes, I'll...